Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. What's going on? Uh, today we're going to be talking about the top five ways to be better in your window cleaning or pressure washing company. But first, I want to say what's up to everybody who is checking us out for the first time. If you're new here, take a look around. It's, you know, it's, it's alright. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, I like it, but no, take a look around. There are 80 plus episodes, all 30 minutes or longer. If you're on YouTube, watch them. If you're listening on your favorite podcast uh, platform, uh, yeah, we're everywhere. Make sure to go ahead and comment on videos, thumbs up if you like them on YouTube. And of course, give us some awesome reviews on your favorite podcast platform. That really does genuinely help us out. But if you are one of the elite, if you are somebody who does all of that stuff I just mentioned, and most importantly, you buy your supplies from me, it is because of you that I get to have not Dr. Thunder Soda, but I get to have the real stuff, Dr. Pepper. So thank you very much for buying supplies through me. And if you want to be one of the elite, one of the cool kids, then uh, give me a call. My number 862-312-2026. And even better, like you guys do every single week, which I really wish I could just like virtually send high fives to people because you guys are awesome. But throw everything in your cart. Shop at your leisure at Shop Window Cleaning Resource. Put it all in your cart. Make sure you're logged in so your cart saves. Put it all in your cart and shoot me a text. Be like, what up, Jersey? It's all in my cart. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. So you can also let me know that code. And yeah, it's just awesomeness. But uh, I can put the order in. It doesn't cost you any extra. And it's like a little support for me. Lonely old me. Thank you, though. No, truly, I really, really genuinely appreciate it. Uh, my customers are literally the best. Another thing, uh, if you're new or newer or old and you have questions on anything from bidding to uh, questions on how to do something, reach out to me. That's really why I'm here. It's what I do all day, every day. Uh, I My normal business hours that I work are actually 10 a.m. to uh, 11 p.m. East Coast time. So quite a bit of time for you to get that in. Now text me at that number, 862-312-2026, or you can even email me. I get a lot of questions like, five questions, you know, I can answer them, shoot them back to you, and you can even print them up if you need to, but josh at windowcleaningresource.com. We want to be a resource, that sounds cheesy, but there you go. Uh, a couple of quick shout outs this week, Steve Donahue, what's going on, man? Uh, Mr. McLaughlin, huh? look at that, so you got double shout outs, man, and I said it right, boom. And uh, Q's window cleaning, what's going on? to you uh last week on youtube we did a, a giveaway uh this week we're doing the same thing we give 50 dollars credit away to somebody who has the best comment next week we're going to be picking at random so just comment on youtube and uh we will pick a winner and uh there's not a ton of, i mean we're talking 20 comments you have like a one in 20 chance to win 50 bucks for window cleaning resource that's worth it right there just comment Comment, share it, do all that stuff. But anyway, this week's winner is Dan D. Jobber. What's up, man? You won the comment of the week last week. So all you need to do is just email me your info, josh at window cleaning resource, and I can get that into your account here. Anyway, like I said, this week we're talking about the top five ways to be better. Um, a lot of guys this time of year are kind of reinventing themselves. Fresh slate, right? New Year's resolution. We talked about that kind of last week. But guys and gals are able to kind of see what they need to improve. You want to lose weight? You want to quit smoking? You want to stop biting your nails? You want to watch more WCR Nation? You could do that. This is your opportunity. It's a new year. Man, it's a new year. So you get to go out and do kind of whatever you want, start yourself fresh, be better, and that's what we're all doing. So we're going to talk about it because I love self-improvement. I love it. it. It's just one of those things that um, you can do yourself and it's kind of, it all is based on how how much that, 
how much you're able to focus on things. Now, everybody messes up their resolutions, right? That's why by February, everybody forgets there was even resolutions and why the gym clears out after the first two weeks in January. But the strong, the people who really, really are able to work at them are still there. There's a lot of people who have changed forever something as of the first of the year. It just has to do with how strong you are. And I find that I'm weak, just like everybody. I know that I'm weak. This is not preachy, you know, service or whatever. But I'm a weak person and uh, all my resolutions don't always come true. But I try and I try to keep with them. And uh, I do succeed on a lot of them. I find reinvention uh, something that's pretty just fun to do. Everybody gets kind of like stagnant, right? You get in that like funk right? We call it the five-year, seven-year itch in business. You get to that point and it's just like, oh, I've been there, done that. I don't want to do it anymore. It's not fun to me. Reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. Who you are now, what your business is now, is not who it has to be forever, obviously. And it's not going to change on its own because again, without a GPS, we talked about this last week, but without a GPS, you're just going to drive. Maybe you'll end up where you want to go, but then the car, the roads, the environment, that's all going to be kind of in control of where you go. And that's not what you want. I'm sorry. I'm so tired. Uh, reinvention, by the way. Uh, we've uh, implemented some uh, new things here. And uh, on the uh, product sides of things, uh, we've been really, really going at it. So I'm tired. I apologize in general. But our top five list this week is kind of reinventions. Now, almost all of these, there are episodes back. And if you haven't checked them out, if you have some time and you're working, I know, I know, but be a podcast listener. The thing is, with podcasts, you can listen while you're working. You can listen while you're driving. You can listen while whatever. And yes, it's my annoying voice, my super nasally broken nose where I'm nasally right, but you may be able to pick something out and think about it, even if you get nothing out of any of them, because again, I'm just a guy with a microphone. I'm not right. I don't know any more than anybody. I'm just here, right? But if you get something, which is just like networking at these huge conventions uh, or the huge convention or other conventions, right? Somebody says something that's just in conversation and you pick it up and it's like the littlest things that I've learned. The littlest things I've learned have been the biggest things in my business. I'm telling you. In passing, somebody says to me, wait, what was that? Oh, blah, blah, blah. You're like, oh my gosh. You know, the memes, I didn't even think of that. Go back and listen. If you haven't, listen, binge them, man. This is your time. This is the time. I'm recording this. This episode is going to be airing in the, what, second week of January? I think it was when it will come out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now's the time. You got a few months before spring hits. Um, binge all you can. But anyway, I digress. A lot of these ideas here kind of have been spoke about a little bit more in detail, but let's jump right into it. First and foremost, number five in the top five ways to be better is efficiency. Now, everybody always says when you when you speak of efficiency, they all go, "Oh yeah, of course." Now, yeah, yeah, you got to be efficient. Let me explain something to you. In our industry, any of the stuff that we do, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, sidewalks, gutter cleaning, all of those are services. The most money after equipment, equipment costs obviously are, you know, insurance, everything else. We don't have to buy something to then give it to you. We're not in retail. We don't buy a shirt for five bucks and sell it to somebody for 20. That's not what we do. What we do is we sell our time. We sell our knowledge. We sell us, right? Like a doctor, they sell their knowledge. The more knowledge you have on something, the more you can make money-wise, right? That's why people always go, ah, I can't, I couldn't charge that. You know and can do things. A, other people hate, and B, other people can't do the way you do. Charge for your knowledge. I digress. With efficiency, you take that and the faster or more efficient you can work. If you can do the exact same job that took you two hours last year, you could do it in an hour this year, you've just made twice the amount of money. 
You just doubled your income with efficiency. Now, there is not one of us anywhere in any of this industries that we're listening, anybody who's listening, who's the best and the fastest, if you are, tell me down below. I love to hear a little, uh, little confidence in people. But you're not the best you'll ever be right now. You're just not. And the fact of the matter is, is that you could always be better. You could always be faster. You could always be more efficient. Now, efficiency doesn't mean I clean windows this fast, I can go this fast. What it means is every piece of it, the entire day, the entire month, the entire year can be running more efficiently. So when you get to a job or you plan a job or you plan a route or you plan how your days are structured or how your week is structured, you can make more money by efficiency. Now listen, even if you don't change anything about yourself and how fast you can clean, it's not to the cleaning. What you can do, we took a change. So we had two cities that we really focused on. Uh, they were sister cities, right? They're basically part of it. There was about a 15-minute stretch of road between the two. Not big. But what we did was instead of taking that 15-minute drive back and forth, which now that I moved, I mean, we were spoiled there. Everything was right. I mean, everything was pretty close. But where I am now, it doesn't really work. So maybe this may not work in your area. But taking your service area and structuring it that we decided that we did pretty much about um, a third-ish of our work we did in the second city and the rest we did it was a little bit different than that but what we did was we figured every single thursday we went to the other city i think it was thursday and every other friday or something we broke it down into um the days of the week in driving down there now what that means is you're almost building a route with your house this little change which sounds so stupid when i say it out loud saved us so much time and efficiency that we could pack on easily an extra house or so into a day and i'm going to explain why now if you're driving back and forth and you're driving to one side of the town to drive all the way down to drive the other side of the town you have to go wherever you're going twice right if you're going there you obviously got to come back so with all of those time savings done and the setup and the teardown when you're only taking a two minute drive as opposed to a 15 20 getting fuel, getting all that stuff, you have so much more time in there because you're tightening things up. It's why route works. Route works because your route is tight. If you could do out of the 10 stores that are on that strip, you can do eight of them. Your route is super, super healthy and you're going to make a lot more money. It's the same thing with houses. You can kind of focus on just tailoring how you schedule, how you set things up. That was huge. Those are little changes you can make. Now, like I said, this may not work for you, but you need to sit down and think about the things that may actually work for you and how you can benefit from them. That's efficiency. It's not just how you clean windows. That also helps, right? Ongoing training. What takes the people the most time? Uh, upper windows. Okay, great. In my shop or my house, I got guys that come back once a week. They have a race on the upper windows, building that efficiency, building their pole work. That's efficiency. You can work on that. And it costs you zero dollars to work on efficiency. It's just structuring things, stepping back, I guess, looking outside the box. If you want to be all cliche, which I'm great at being cliche, right? Do that and uh, build up your efficiency. And number four in the list, the top five ways to be better is planning. I know, I beat a dead horse last week. We talked about planning. If you haven't listened, go back, plan your New Year's. This is last week's episode. It was a low viewed and listened to episode. The title in a lot of this stuff is What Catches People. It does. And that one, it's unfortunate because that is one of my favorite things to do is planning. Forecasting and putting things out, putting it down in writing creating a google doc if you're not using google sheets uh not google doc google drive uh google sheets any of that stuff it's like microsoft excel but free and web-based and you can get it on any computer and anybody can look at it at the same exact time and see everybody typing in live it's awesome do that but forecasting and calculating where you want to go what you need to do to get there breaking it down to the little pieces that's the way to go like the comments said in the um uh um comments like the comments said 
in the comments on YouTube last week where somebody was like, yeah, I want to lose 50 pounds, but I got to lose it one pound at a time. It's the same thing. You can buy a half a cow, a full cow, hell. You can buy whatever and you can eat it, but you can't eat it in one sitting. But a lot of people go and they buy a half cow, quarter cow. You got to eat it a little bit at a time. That's the same thing with planning. Planning where you're going is like typing it into a GPS. The GPS will tell you the exact route. But the only way that you can find out what times a week work best in different routes, what, you know, I know that there's always school buses on this road. They're always stopping me. I know it's going to be busy. The traffic's going to be coming out of this, this road to this, and then everybody gets out of that factory. So then you know that because you've planned the route and you've looked at it and you've now calculated it. GPS can only take you so far. Just like putting it down on paper, you need to make it happen. That's the hard part. But planning is how you get somewhere that you want to go and how you get there. That, that, I'm not going to go too crazy into this because, again, last week we talked all about planning. I don't want to do two weeks of it. But planning is huge. Like I said, forecasting, even in my business, which if you guys didn't know a little bit about me, is uh, my business is in buyout, so I'm pretty much hands off. It actually is completely bought out uh, by my operations officer in uh, September, I think. So then I'm completely out of the game. But I've been in the game for 13, 14 something years. But I do sales. That's what I do. I sell window cleaning supplies and I help people startup companies. I get to do the exciting thing with these people, listen to the stories, help them, blah, blah, blah. That's besides the point. But that's what I get to do. And forecasting where I want to go in that industry is huge. These shows, how do I forecast where I want to go? How do I forecast how big I want it to be or, or the change that it needs to happen, right? I have to forecast. I have to plan. I have to write it down so that I can see the path I'm going. Why do you think people buy maps? Man, got to see where they're going. Got to see where they're going. If you take one thing out of this episode, planning, even though it's not number one, is huge for something that you can implement. Again, free. Free. You can do that for free. You can plan at 10 o'clock at night. You can plan at 6 in the morning before your window cleaning. You can plan on a rainy day. You can work on efficiency in a rainy day or on a slow day. Planning, winter, summer, it doesn't matter. These are things that you can do to better your company, to better this world you live in for free. And anytime, planning. Planning's huge. Number three in the list of top five ways to be better is cleaning your image. Now, let me explain. No, I'm not saying that you have a criminal record that you're trying to expunge, right? That's not the case because... I think that you know who you are now compared to then. You can know who you are. That's not what I'm talking about. The thing I'm talking about is maybe your apparel needs an update. Maybe your bucket on a belt is just duct taped and gross. Maybe your uh, belt is tattered and ripped and faded. Maybe your vinyl graphics on your truck is getting there. You know, you got an accident, so that piece had to be pulled off. Maybe there is a very, very slippery slope to go when you let that stuff go. It's very, very hard to realize it until it's too late. You have to take an active look at it. Uh, what we did is we have something called a store. Now, there's multiple things in the store, but we have every supply of anything that we would ever need, from rubbers to razors to end clips, right? All in bins, and if any of the guys need something, they can exchange a crappy one for a new one. Uh, if they lost it, you know, it was one of those things like, hey, don't lose something. If you lose it, you'll have to pay for it yourself. I didn't really ever say that, but if you lost it, you had to explain to me that you lost it, and then I'd go get you one. That was in the store, but on the other side of the store, in the same racks of supplies, there was apparel. There was shirts, winter hats, hoodies, uh, polos for salespeople in office, and there was uh, ball caps if you want it, because a lot of guys wore hats. All embroidered, all the same thing. Now, if your shirt ever looked like crap, go get another shirt. <laughs> a a single-color screen-printed shirt costs like six, six or seven bucks right? A hat, a ball cap, an embroidered hat, ball cap, right? That sounds cheesy. But that hat costs, that's the most expensive thing we had. Eh, maybe that are hoodies, but that was like 25 bucks. A hoodie, maybe 25 bucks, right? 
if you looked like crap, it was more valuable to me to not look like crap than the cost of these apparel pieces, right? Graphics, we redid graphics every single year. I have a vinyl cutter. It's actually right there. I have a vinyl cutter. I can make graphics at any time. Now, I'm not saying go out there and buy graphics. Maybe you got an awesome graphics guy. That's cool too. But refresh things. Make it look neat. If you can't go and redo your trucks every single year, do pieces of it. Do little bits. It looks amazing. It's like a tattoo. The first time you get a tattoo, that thing looks, man, pop. It just pops. After all the sun on the vinyl and your wrap or your regular letters or the car washes that peel the corners or the brittleness that starts to break and delaminated, non-UV protected, blah, blah, blah. It starts to look like crap and you're putting an image out there that you don't care. That's what it all comes down to. Caring. Looking at that right now, that's a way to be better is you want to look fresh. Nobody feels better than when they're wearing a new pair of socks, new underwear, right? That new that new uh, pair of shoes. You feel awesome and people notice that. Same thing in your business. Clean your image up. Clean the inside of your trucks. You know I hate when people drive around in dumpsters. I just saw it the other day. Guy gets out of his car and there is literally garbage falling out. There's cups from McDonald's that are crushed falling out. You know he dumped it out and threw the thing in the... It was just gross. I don't ever want to hire you. Ever. Well, that's because you're superficial. No, it's because you don't care enough to clean the inside of your car. You're not going to clean the inside of my windows. I'm not trusting you. you. We clean things for a living. Anyway, be clean. Fix your image. Just take a step back and look at it at least. Go into the new year with some crispy gear and uh, some crispy vinyl. Anyway, uh, that was number three. But number two in the top five ways to be better is raising your prices. Another hot topic. Again, comment down below with your feelings on the raising your prices. But I feel that that is something that needs to be done. Now, that's how you build a healthy company. We talk, again, go back, look. The episode just a couple weeks ago was on raising your prices, and it was talking more about the 2% cost of living increase so that you don't fall too far behind and have to do monster increases. But the other side of it is increasing new customers. A new customer calls, you say, hey, my old price was $10, I wanna be a healthier company, it's now 11. It's now 12, it's now 15, it's now 20. Heck, I doubled my prices, let's see. The only way to see, because a lot of you, a lot of you, most common, other than people jumping on who've never used WaterFed and be like, ah, WaterFed sucks, I can run laps around you. No, you can't. You don't use it. That's ignorant, right? <laughs> it drives me crazy. Because another one is, I can't raise prices. Those aren't my customers. Uh, maybe you can do that where you are, but not in my market. I can't do that. I got too many guys that are that are lower than me. That is complete, complete bull spit BS. As I say to my kids, if it's BS, it's bologna sandwich. But... It's completely garbage unless you've done the testing, which I'm not talking about a little testing. I'm talking about testing for a year, testing on and off for two years, on and off for five years. To do it once and go, oh man, like the first person called and I raised my prices and they said, no, that means I can't do it. You're killing yourself. That's not a, McDonald's cheeseburgers used to be 10 cents. A gallon of gas used to be 25 cents. Things raise, prices raise, people are accepting of it. You can sell yourself at a higher rate than you think you can. Without that kind of being, you know, said, look at products that are of quality, are always more expensive. I'm not going to get in, it's not a pricing episode, but it's something that you should look at, especially going in the new year. Be healthier, raise your prices, charge a little bit more, and uh, be a premium product, because that's what we are. Literally a premium product. We are a uh, luxury, and as soon as you understand, really, really understand the world luxury, that opens the door up to anything. Opens the door up to charging whatever you want, because we're a luxury. There's a guy that just bought a $245 million yacht, just in the news, maybe a week ago. 
What kind of boat can you buy for $245 million? Doesn't matter. Is it awesome? <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Doesn't matter. It's $245 million. Doesn't matter what the price was. He wanted that boat. He got on it. He fell in love with it. It took what he wanted. He made it happen. Grant Cardone says that when somebody says something's too high, it's what they're saying is that is too high. That item. You haven't sold them. You haven't told them why it's what it is. You're focused on price. I'm not talking about prices again. I'm sorry to beat that one. Go back and listen. Raise your prices. Be healthy. It's a new year, man. Do it on the next call. Raise your prices. Let me know in the comments uh, how that went. And number one, the number one way in the top five ways to be better. And I know nothing. I'm a nobody with a microphone. These are my opinions. And number one in that list is to learn. Ah, everybody goes, ah, man, I thought this was going to be the golden bullet. Of course we know that. We know we got to learn. Yeah, no, I learn all the time. I'm always learning. Every day. No. What I'm talking about is making an active, active effort to learn. I'm talking about reading sales books. I'm talking about reading books. Did you know there's industry books? Do you know? Let me. These are just the ones that I have. These are these are uh, these are Kevin Dabrowski's books. Actually, that was his first one. If you remember that, Naked Window Cleaner. Anyway, those ones I have. Uh, Chris's uh, book on um, the marketing blueprint. It's free, man. It's free. Uh, that kind of stuff is all there. But the other part that you're not realizing is what you're doing right now. If you're still on this podcast, you're still listening to it or watching it, step one, you've completed part of it. You're learning. The reason you come and do this every week, the reason you take the time to listen to some dummy babble is because you're going to be better. You're going to learn. And maybe, just maybe, you're going to pick something out of that. That's learning. I'm not a book reader. I'm not a book reader. I'm very poor at reading books. It don't, doesn't register very well. Uh, it Audiobooks don't register either as well as I would like. But if you're not a reader or a book listener, you need to attempt it again and again. you got to keep attempting it. Here's the thing. You are selling yourself. I know maybe you're not selling, maybe you're not even taking new clients on, but you're selling yourself always, every day. Every single day, you're persuading people, you're selling yourself on why people should choose you. Every single day. Why not learn? Why not learn that? Why not learn how to go profit first in your business? Why not look at double-digit growth? Why not see the ways to uh, influence people? Uh... There's so many books out there on self-improvement, business, uh, all that stuff that you're missing out if you're not looking. Sales in general, there are so many books. I bet you that a third of the business books could be on sales, if not more. Sales. You're selling yourself and why people should use you. You're selling the upsell. You're blatantly selling booking on an appointment. You're selling yourself. Be better at that. Learn. You know what's coming up? Still a ways away, but it's the huge convention. Go to the huge convention. Oh yeah, but I'm pretty busy that time of year. Uh, I don't have I don't have the money. Oh man, I, I looked at it. It's gonna be fifteen hundred bucks. It's gonna be two thousand dollars with the hotel and and the flight and the caviar and the champagne that I'm gonna drink and eat. So. So, think about this. Easier said than done. Because you, we are all cash poor right now. We get that. But here's the thing. If I said to you, you got to pay me a thousand bucks. I'll give you $50,000 next year. This year. I'll give you $50,000 within the next 12 months. If you give me a thousand dollars now. Every one of you would go and borrow, beg, and steal that money. I would have a thousand dollars from every single person who's listening. That is what knowledge does. Knowledge is something that no one can take away from you, not the IRS, not the prison system, not your competitors. Knowledge stays with you forever. Ah, yeah, we forget it, we refresh on it, but it's yours. You get to choose to keep it. 
that's the same thing with these these huge conventions. When you can go to a convention and be around 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 other people that are just the same mindset as you, it is absolutely incredible what you can learn, what you can do, how you can be better, how you can just get fired up. And I'm telling you that if I told you I'd give you $50,000 next year, you'd all give me $1,000. That's what these shows are. That's what all this stuff is. I'm not plugging the huge convention. It's a ways away. Go check it out. It's thehugeconvention.com. But that kind of stuff, the books, the podcasts, this, other stuff, you can go and learn everything you could possibly know to be better. This is our college. This is what you're going to do. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to college to learn an industry that they're not sure they're even going to work in. You're here. This is your empire. This is your time. Learn everything you can to be better and be better this year. Not to say you're not good before because you're awesome. But anyway, that's the show this week. I appreciate you guys watching and listening. I hope you're still with me because I'm going to give you a 5% code for um, window cleaning supplies, pressure washing supplies. You know, we have like 10,000 SKUs. It's crazy. Craziness. If you want to buy any supplies, please shop at night, shop during the day, put stuff in your cart, make sure you're logged in so it saves, and then just give me a shout, shoot, shoot me a text, be like, hey, I got some stuff in my cart, jersey, put it in, costs you nothing more, and it's awesome for me, so go and do that. This week's code, you tell me via text or phone call, uh, and you can call, people are always like, oh, I'm scared to call, you could certainly call, call me anytime, but this week, the code is... Be better. Yeah, that's the code. Be better. You tell me that code, you get 5% off any and everything that you are ordering. Boom, look at that. That's pretty good, right? Okay, cool. My number again, 862-312-2026. If anything, shoot me a text, say what's up, man. Hate the podcast. I love the podcast. Your nose is crooked. Don't care. Shoot me a text. I love hearing from you guys and gals, so please go do that. Just go out there. It's a new year. New you. Do me a favor and go out there and be epic.